Well, if you think about what's happening when you're founding a business, and you may be funded, and so that's maybe a little less relevant in some businesses, but in most businesses, you're in the market before your product is even built sometimes. You may not have a track record. You may not have any customers at all. So you don't have a reference base. You can't point to what you've done before. You may not even have product market fit. So if you're ruthlessly honest with yourself, the thing that you're selling is not your great idea or your prototype or your yet-to-be-built product or even your built product. The thing that you're selling is yourself. And convincing someone to trust you that the product you say you have, whether you do or you don't, will actually work and get the job done. And it is an enormous ask to have someone bet on you and everything that you promise will come. So until you reach a million bucks or maybe well beyond that, the product you're selling is you first and your ability to deliver a solution or a product that does what you say it's going to do. And that's why I think so many founders who maybe have an engineering background or who are enamored with the idea, and like you said, I've made this mistake many, many times. I've been so excited about the product that what I want to do is spend more time tinkering with the product and less time being out there actually selling it and achieving product market fit. And maybe the biggest mistake I see is founders who maybe make a sale or two and then say, I want to go back and focus on the product, so I'll hire a head of sales. And they find their favorite Rolodex-filled head of sales who was really, really good in an environment where there was an infrastructure to support him or her. But mm -hmm. as the second person into a company, a head of sales is usually not the greatest hire. I'm of the view that a founder should say stay at the front end of sales throughout the scaling journey, but more about that in a moment.